Get Warrior Tough, Mental Training 101 with Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. And now back to Andrew and Dutch. All right. Back in the saddle. Dutch and Andrew. Andrew and Dutch. Dutch is at the Dutch Coleman on the Twitter. I'm at Warrior Tough PhD. Use the hashtag Get Warrior Tough if you want to get in touch with us. Love to hear your stories of how you've been manipulated. I mean, been manipulated by people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, uh, one of the things that I try to do and that we, we find ourselves trying to do as a, as a team is that we try, when we give you this information, we try not to make ourselves seem better than anyone else. Because we're not. Because <laughs> we're not. And the way we do that is by reminding you that this came with a process. This came with a, with and again, we call this a skill. This is something that can be learned by each and every one of us listening, each and every one uh, walking around that you see every day. This is a skill that can be taught and learned. So when we say um, their actions don't match their words and we speak as if ours do, that's only because we are, we are a part of the, the, the culture that, uh, that allows you to, have the ability to check yourself and to make sure you do, you know, you have a process that keeps you from going there because we naturally uh, are beings just like everyone else. Right. We we, may, right. We, and we keep, we have a culture of accountability. Absolutely. That's part so, of what the phalanx coaching is. I mean, we, we just got off of, you know, an advanced call just a few minutes ago, our advanced coach and what it is, it's iron sharpening iron. It is, it is keeps us on the straight and narrow, if you will. Um, it is mm -hmm. part of the culture that we have, built for ourselves Dutch and that we subscribe to and that we foster. That we offer that we can help them build, yeah, that absolutely. we can help you build, the listener. So that's that's the key here is that we're trying to put you in this space. We're trying to give you these abilities. We're, this isn't judgment. We always say this is judgment-free zone, yeah, man. absolutely is. We're not here to judge you, but we are, we are trying to equip you. And we're not trying to impress you with the things that we can do, but we're trying to impress upon you the things that you that can we do. can do and that yeah. you can do. Yeah, that's really so, what you can um, do. I and mean, we can just know the process yeah. to do it. Because we can't fix your stuff. I, I'll be honest, Dutch. I can't fix anybody's problems. What I can do is give them the process where they can fix their own problems. And we can be examples and proof that it can be fixed because we'll be transparent and say that we, we were there and that many others were there. Yes. And without this process, they would have still been there. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so let's we'll move on from that because we'll come back to that I and mean, we'll do a show on congruency, um, and that'll get me some brownie points. What up? And if you've been, <laughs> you know what I like about brownie points, though. All right, so uh, yeah, and if you've been in our seminars, you know about brownie points. Whoop whoop. Okay, so um, they uh, the next thing is is that emotional manipulators are like Olympic gold medalists in using guilt. They will leverage guilt to the hilt. And you know what I always say? If someone's making me feel guilty, stop everything. That's a red flag. If someone's using guilt to get you to do something, I will stop immediately and not do it just because. That's my rule. If you're trying to guilt me into something, I absolutely will not do it, even if it is something that I know should be done. Just on principle alone, I will not act on guilt. It's, a, it's a, a, an autopilot program for me now. Back in the day, uh, I had to consciously say, no, I'm, someone's trying to make me feel guilty. Right now, if someone says, you know, they try to, and I'll just use, you know, there's the like, you know, the save the animals commercials where they show the puppies. And if you don't oh, turn, yeah. and then there's the, the starving kids and there's the, any of them. I know when they're using, what they're doing is using guilt to get you to move. I absolutely will do the opposite. If you tell me I need to give right now to stop that, I'm, nope. You're making me feel guilt. You're manipulating me with guilt. I'll give you a very simple one, and I'm sure one that everyone sees uh, on a daily basis. How about on Facebook when they say to copy and paste uh, this to your status and, <sighs> and uh, or, or, or the fo the forwarding in the yeah. email? You know, if you don't forward this keep to the, 20 people. Keep the prayer keep the chain, chain going. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm telling you, man. If people make you feel guilty because – they don't make you me think feel about guilty. the language. Oh, I know man, the language alone in those things. <laughs> and then you see it up, and then I could look at all the people that did, that liked it or shared it or whatever. I'm like, got them, got them, got them, got them. Yeah, yeah. And I'd never do it. I tell you what. And and you know what? If it, if it's you know if it's something worthwhile, it wouldn't need that sort of a, 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 a what Lever. do you call it? Bump. Yeah, that bump in order to get yeah, it done. Right. Exactly. So, I got to you know. 
And really, and our moms were great at this. Moms, they, we got it honestly because they use it all the time. Oh yeah. But I made it. It's your favorite. Yeah, mom. Guess what? It's Christmas, and I'm trying to lose twenty pounds. I get that you made those cookies for me. I appreciate it, but you know I'm trying to lose twenty pounds. You don't like my cooking? I made them special for you. I'm about to shove those cookies down the garbage disposal, and you won't see hey, me again for Christmas. We won't ever say it's not very effective. It's very effective. Yeah, that's why you know? they do it because it works. <laughs> It, almost every fundraising drive out there. Every I it's just anyway. You're being manipulated with guilt. Yeah. Enough said? Enough said. All right, move it off. Enough said. All right. <laughs> they uh emotional manipulators, they love to play the victim. It's never their fault. It it, it you know, I it, I always like that. You know that Blues Brothers movie? Have you ever seen Blues Brothers? Long time ago. Okay, so John Belushi and uh, Dan Aykroyd, the, the Blues Brothers, they're in the sewer trying to get out from the cops, right? And they're sta- and then Princess Leah, who was John Belushi's yes. fiance, whatever, standing there with an M16 <laughs> and a flamethrower. Yes. And, it, and he's like, he pulls his sunglasses off for the only time in the movie, and he's like, baby, there was a fire. The cab got a flat tire. There was a hurricane. It wasn't my fault. Right, and then she's like, oh, you know, and she drops the gun, and then he kisses her and drops her in the mud and walks off. <laughs> That's what we're talking about right here. It's never oh, their man. fault. It's always something else. It was a fire. There was a hurricane. It was, you know, the trains weren't running on time. <laughs> you got you to love it, man, because, it, you know, for every example— there are in, uh, in pop culture and everything that you're going to, you know, something in your life that, that, that happened to you or you actually did to someone else or you even witnessed, uh, you know, secondhand when you sat there and watched it happen. So uh, it's great uh, going over these things, man, because there's nothing like uh, being validated when you, when you get new information. <laughs> and that's another thing we do, man. Everything we do is like you said, it's nothing new under the sun. You're going to be able to point to something that you don't you don't have to just take our word for it. You can look at your own life and it's going to be validated. Things we say are validated by things that are happening to you every day or to people that you know every single day. Yeah. No, it's I was just sitting here thinking about one guy. <laughs> he didn't show us uh, back in the when I was a cop. Right. And you work every day because it doesn't matter. I mean, every day is a, a Monday or whatever. Right. So there's no day. He could he called in to sick to work on a Sunday. Um, well, you didn't call in sick. He just didn't show up to work. And they're like, where were you? He's like, well, I had a dental, a dentist appointment on a Sunday. On a Sunday. Like, what dentist office is open on a Sunday, man? <laughs> like <laughs> I had to get my teeth cleaned on a Sunday. <laughs> Come on, man. Anyway, I was just thinking about that. Yeah. All right. So um, here's another an, another red flag for you. Whether it's, um, you know, it could be a personal relationship. It could be a business relationship. It could be a colleague. This is what Dutch said. They always want to skip a few steps all the way up to, you know, stage 36 or whatever. Um, they share too much too soon, it seems like. They expect too much from you too soon. They're too close too soon. It's like it's too intense, making it too special, moving it too fast. Um, very flattery, like, oh, you're the greatest. And listen, I, <laughs> Dutch, you know I used to pastor a church, right? Get yes. My theology's and PhD. Uh, my PhD's in theology. I'm getting all mixed up tonight. So um, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you're manipulating me, Dutch. Stop neurocoupling. <laughs> it's your cold. So I had a guy, so I'm in church, and I'm, you know, I'm, I, when I teach, it's a lot like what I do here. It's not really any different. We're just not using science. I'm using the Bible. So this guy gets up, and he was visiting the church that day, and he's, there's, you know, I don't know, 100 people in there. And he says, he raises his hand at the end, can I speak? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. You know, I was I give anybody the mic, right? So the guy gets the mic, and he gets up, and he said, he said I've listened to five popes speak in person and you're the greatest, you're better than all of them, you're so fantastic. You're like, I was like, oh, grab your wallet, man. 
<laughs> What's going on? So it was way too much too soon. You heard me one time, and I'm, I guarantee you I'm not better than five popes. And I didn't even know if the five popes had been alive. You know, I'm like, dude, how could you even hear five popes? I don't know. But anyway, it was just so over the top. This is what I'm talking about. It was too much yeah. too soon. And, hey, man, um, let's just slow this thing down, and let's back off the, the mix a little bit. It was just a little yeah. too much. Well, I'll, I'll give you another great example. You know, when someone, and this is, this is typical with common. You ever notice that common always ask, always offer you this great opportunity to make all this money or do all these things, and they just met you? Yeah. It's like, you just met me. Why are you offering this to all your friends, your closest friends, your family? I mean, you should be so busy with them right now that you couldn't run across me because this is such a great can't opportunity. Miss opportunity. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> everyone's going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Why are you talking to me? We just we literally just met. Right. Why are you off? So again, too much too soon. There's there's something there that he's sharing all this stuff with you and he doesn't even know you. And so you you got it. You got to keep that that radar up. Right. And for all the uh, the ladies in the audience, there's a book by Gavin De Becker out there called The Gift of Fear. I'd recommend that you get it. Um, what it is the book is uh, basically case studies of how people who uh, sexually assaulted women. They reconstructed the case and almost without fail, it was somebody that was doing too much too soon. Like, I'll help you with the groceries. Well, since I helped you with the groceries, you know, and I, uh, you know, don't you want to invite me in? And it was just like weird. They, they were like, I, there was something wrong, but because of reciprocity, because they did something nice for me, they said something really nice to me. They said something super, you know, it, complimentary it, you know, to me. I felt bad for rejecting them. And, th- and I, we only got about 30 seconds left in this segment. But those things can snowball really quickly. That's why you have to be careful. You have to be able to identify it as soon as possible because it can get out of whack really, really quickly. Yeah, so I would encourage you to get that book, uh, The Gift of Fear by Gavin DeBecker. You're listening to the Get Warrior Tough radio show with Dutch and Andrew. We'll be right back. <laughs> 